you know the whole controversy with Pete Rose not being allowed into the uh, Hall of Fame? Yeah, rightfully so, juicer. Juicer? Oh, I thought you were talking about the uh, the other one. Do you know why Pete Rose is not eligible for the Hall What's of Fame? What's the other one? Barry Bonds. <laughs> yeah, most people confuse those two guys. They're both baseball players. <laughs> that, that, that's true, but Pete Rose, Pete Rose is ineligible because he gambled while he was while he was a player. Yeah, but I don't understand why that's not okay for him. But they still, I mean, Mookie bets. No one here gets that joke. I do. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction of court. I'm Mookie Betts. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Forum, Juicy Content. Thanks for all the support. Comments, got a like button. I love the Red Sox have a history of giving away the greatest players of all time. <sighs> yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> uh, today we're doing a movie review, and we're doing a movie review of the 2010 Marathi film uh, Natarang. Yes, uh, directed by Ravi Jethav. That's okay. what I would say. A uh, writer. Also, he wrote the screenplay for it as well. Uh, uh, composed by Ajay and Atul. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, starring Atul Konkarni uh, and a whole bunch of other people. Atul Konkarni is the star of it, though. Correct. Uh, obviously, it came out to the sense. All true. This will be a 100% spoiler review because it came out uh, 12, 13 years ago. Yeah. So, so if you haven't seen it. three years ago. <laughs> no, yeah, no, 13. No, it's 13. Yeah. Uh, so if you haven't watched it, please go watch go it. Go watch it. Come it. back. Come back. Rick, your initial thoughts of Not Tarang. I was going to write a paragraph, ah, so that should tell you a lot right out the gate. That means he hated it. Um, and there's an, a level of this where, and I've said this before about certain films, where they come to you at seasons of your life that are definitively providential. Uh, even aside from that, I still would love this movie. This is, this is, I just, I love this movie, as is usually the case with with people who love acting. Uh, it, it helps. I mean, you have to. You can't just have a good story about acting. You have to have good performances. Um, I I found this from a, the get go to be a very endearing film, and then I loved the message, and then overall, just from start to finish, we'll we'll talk in depth. But I yeah. loved it. Uh, I really enjoyed it as well. I had I had a few nitpick issues with like uh, some of the filmmaking parts of it, but I love the story. I love the performances. Uh, Tolkien Carney has shown. Time and time again, he's a great actor. A that, is a, that is a thespian who is yes. not given enough, in, in our opinion, yeah. uh, uh, notoriety. We, we've seen him many times in terms of, like, he's more support. We saw him in the film with Taboo. We've seen him in, in other films as well. But he's not mentioned in the same conversation as um, Nawaz, his Pankaj, people of his same age and of, and um, you know, I think, caliber of acting. Yeah. Um, I think he's one of those actors that, in the industry, everybody gives him the respect yeah. he deserves, but the larger audience doesn't. I don't think they've fully and grasped. I know a lot of you are like, yeah, we definitely know who. To, I, I know. Oh, yeah, of course you know who he our is. Our stupid babies know that. Yeah, I'm saying I don't hear his name talked about with Manoj Bajpayee or, or these other people where right. he should be. Even in round tables, I mean, yeah. when you talk about all of the round tables or the coffee with Karans that we've seen or the interviews that we've seen, his name should be mentioned more. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I a thousand percent agree. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll get into everything about this film, but I, I did enjoy it as well. Uh, Marathi just seems to love uh, theater stories. Yes, they do, <laughs> I think, and I love that they love them. I think maybe we've maybe seen 20, maybe, Marathi films. I'd mm -hmm. say half, 15 at minimum <laughs> have been about some type of theater or arts or something, right? That's yeah. what it feels like. It does. They really, and really I love enjoy that, uh, that style, and I know because they're like the theater mecca. Uh, of of India or like the the indie industry of the Hindi industry. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about Atul Konkarni because obviously he is the creme de la creme star of this very uh, complex character. Yep. Requires a thespian. It requires a thespian. Also, incredible transformance, uh, transformation. Uh, because I believed he was a bodybuilder. Oh, I sure did. And holy hell! I believed that he lost a whole bunch of weight and he looked. Like this character, <laughs> like it was, it was like a Christian Bale type yeah, transformation. It was one of those things where I was surprised if I've missed any messages from stupid babies over the years. I don't know why I haven't heard about the physical transformation he does in this film because it's on that, it's that level. It's Raging Bull, it's 
it's about as profound a physical transformation yeah. on screen as you're going to see. And what people have wanted us to watch this film for a long time. Uh, the reason I, I didn't is because I was I kept holding out hope that the we'd have find a version with the songs that were subbed. Mm. Unfortunately, the songs were not subbed, which it's, is common. Yeah, sad. Uh, but I, I wanted to because I, I heard the songs were very important. They were still beautiful, but we did not have. Right, songs. we didn't know what they were saying. So uh, there's that. But yeah, his his. Just physical, just not not even acting performance. Just his physical transformation. <laughs> he looked like Amir Khan and Dongle. Oh, the minute, the yeah, the minute it started, my first, the m- first frame, I wrote down in my notes. I went, "Bro, dude got jacked." <laughs> yeah, he was massive. So, like the fact that he was a wrestler, uh, really, uh, I was a hundred percent believed that, yeah. that this that he wanted this. And then it was also really endearing that this guy he just seemed to always want to do theater. And be an actor, and like he, he really was striving to do this, and you know people around him weren't supporting him, but he yeah. still wanted to do it, and 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 everything. But then when he obviously transformed into um, the the his 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 think, eunuch, for lack of a better yeah, term, because that's what he's called in the film. I, I hate calling him what they call him because it, it seems very very offensive. Yeah, I to, know to call him what all of them were calling him. Yeah, um, but it was. Incredible, because I completely believed it. It also looked like a completely new character from what he was playing in the beginning. Uh, so he really committed, not only, obviously, the character in the film, but the, the actor committed to getting his body. I don't know what they filmed first. My suspicion, the first it was they the, filmed the slender parts first, and then, and then they, they bulked, bulked up, up. Maybe for a year or so? Yeah. Which is a, quite a commitment for yeah. a film. To uh, to wait that. I long. mean, it could, they could have reversed it. It's going to take probably the same amount of time to, to lose. All yeah. That, to lose so all uh, yeah, yeah. It would be really interesting to talk to him. Um, but man, did I feel for his character? Oh yeah, uh, big time in many different. And also, you like you also felt some for for the other characters that that for what his actions were doing, even though he was following his dream, was affecting right other people, which is right. good writing. Uh, yeah, very good writing. Because uh, on one hand he's following his dream, but also on another hand you 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 get <laughs> that everybody like he it's it, even though it shouldn't affect his family, it is affecting his family uh, and the, and the people around him, and also he's being selfish with you know he's he is married and then <laughs> he's having an affair and right. and so he's this very gray character, but you're still rooting for him because he's a person and you want people to be happy and to follow their dreams. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Uh, and so I thought it was very beautifully well written. Very human character. Yeah. Very believable, very human. Uh, uh, can't deny what his heart's feeling and at the same time struggling with he knows full well what the ramifications are going to mean to the people around him. Yeah. Yet he wants to remain true to himself. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, it is a very common theme for most artists, especially actors, yeah. who throughout time and <laughs> Memorial have struggled sadly with wanting to be who they are uh, in every way, both as artists and as people, and be true to themselves. Yet society all around them and loved ones and family members often. Yeah. Let me tell you from personal experience, friends, if you have family and loved ones, even one who supports you wholeheartedly in your pursuits as an artist. You are blessed mm. because it's it, I know what it's like to have the opposite. And I know what it's like. I have never had anyone in my life. I mean, my, my kids are there and my mom and dad are there. But outside of blood, no one has come re- even remotely close to supporting me and loving me for who I am as an actor like Indrani. Mm. It's this so... Uh, it's it's really sad that society has consistently relegated actors uh, and performers to just it's it's hobby. It could never be something that needs to be the center of your life because if it is, you're irresponsible. Uh, you're you're probably immoral. You don't have a backup plan. Yep. Yeah. yeah where's your plan B? Yeah, you your shouldn't. Plan? And this really this really shouldn't be your plan A. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I loved his part. I like uh, like the overall the message of it. Yeah, I did too. It, like at the end. He was like, yeah, this kind of sucks, but also, I got nothing stopping me now. Exactly. That that last frame, I thought was like, that's great. Yeah. I I, I love that. Yeah. Um, Even though, obviously, it's, he lost his child, he lost his, his, his wife, um, uh, and he lost, obviously, everything at his whole 
you know, life basically at that village. Yeah. Uh, and I'm assuming he went to maybe Mumbai or something like that. And, right. And actually pursued what he wanted to pursue. Right. Um, and the old adage, better late than never. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he's like, I, I got nothing. I got nothing to lose. Yeah. So might as well do what I want now. And it's also somewhat a cautionary tale in that regard. I mean, it is better late than never. And everybody, I think he, like most people, is is doing his was doing his ample best throughout his life. And th- you you do reach a place where you be true to yourself. Yeah. Be true to yourself. Yeah. I, I just just uh, I I heard an interview with Sylvester Stallone recently and explaining why he never took the money he was offered because people offered him five hundred thousand dollars, which was a lot of money back in the seventies, to buy Rocky. They did not want him starring as Rocky because he was an unknown actor. And he said, "I wanted to make sure that I failed on my terms. I wasn't going to die with regret after I spent that money and been mad at myself for selling out." I, I want and I wanted to die on my terms. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Makes great sense. message. Uh, but also at that same time, the, all his other team didn't mm. choose that. So they they decided to give up. Yeah, I, even though obviously a lot of them weren't uh, like the the uh, producer friend. I guess he's not an artist uh, per se. But the, <laughs> there's others that were artists uh, that decided to stay there and try to yeah. rebuild their life their life uh, but i also loved his last words to his 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 buddy who said i'm i'll be saving a stage manager position for yeah. you yeah yeah uh and it was, it was incredibly sad because the way they because obviously everybody's like you need a, a male what do they call him a male the dancer dancer male yeah. performer yeah male a guy basically dressed as a girl right performer uh, and he didn't want to do it. No. Didn't want to do it uh, because he he knew what it meant, I guess. Um, How but, he'd be perceived. Yeah. yeah. But also, like, people praise you when you're doing it on stage and then ridicule you for the same thing yeah. off the stage. And it's, it was, it's what happened to to uh, Heath Ledger and uh, his co-star in Brokeback Mountain. Oh, Jake Gyllenhaal? Yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal. They both were praised by critics and people, but in interviews uh, and in, in many other ways, they were deeply ridiculed yeah. for the, those portrayals. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, but also, it was, I didn't even understand at times, like the, the that gangster guy that decided, hey, gay boy, I'm going to show you how gay you are by raping you. Yeah. I was like, how does that even make sense? It doesn't. <laughs> like, what? Right. <laughs> hey, you're so gay. You you're so gay. I'm gonna I'm gonna rape you. Right. Ha. Ha. Look at you, gay. Right. Look, you, you, Look at you, you, gay boy. What? What? <laughs> not a, not as a story. I don't understand. I just no don't, no. In the like story, the, it made, the mentality. It's the I mentality just, of those kinds of people. How does that make any sense? It doesn't. It, obviously, you you have some deeply closeted sexual tension For that sure. you have built up. You you're you're <laughs> living out a fantasy in the guise. Uh, of... Heterosexual and, self-righteousness. Uh, yeah. It, it just, I was like, how does that, like, <laughs> this guy's so gay, I'm going to kiss him. Show him how <laughs> gay he is, because he's probably going to like it. What? Yeah. <laughs> Makes and no I, sense. And but I, it, that, also, that scene was so sad. So sad. Because, and also incredibly performed by So um, was, I loved the scene as well. The two other scenes I loved. The, the other one was the guy in bed with him. Oh, yeah. Saying, hey, no one needs to find out. It's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. And then I was... The, the the moment I was most mesmerized and couldn't take my eyes off the screen was when he is in full character coming on to the guy and he's saying, you're going to do it, right? And he gives him the, the leaf and he hands it back. I I was just, that was one of those moments where it's like, yeah, give the guy his Oscar. He's yeah. doing such a good job. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> and he, he definitely transformed when he was on stage as well um, yeah. into that. Uh, that character, that, that he was character. fully, uh, uh, he was, Atol Kulkarni was fully invested as well. I really say. liked fully her. Fully invested. Uh, her as well. I the, did too. The, um, she had a. I liked every, I liked both ladies. I liked his, yeah. his, his wife and I liked her, the dancer yeah. future wife. Yeah. Um, and that was, that was interesting. Um, what it, they decided to do there at the end too, that she came yeah. with him at the end. She believed in him. Uh, I didn't like the end. Uh, I didn't understand the need for it. You know how it started and then how it ended with the the award. Mm-hmm. Like I I know why because they wanted to you to know that he made it. Right. 
I don't like that. I, I, I liked it. I think it would have been much more powerful to not know if he made it or not, but he's still pursuing it, like, and them just going off into the distance. And, and I like the ending because I know you don't like the button up, have to have a happy ending. I don't. However, I do like the symbolism it creates, whether or not it's a little literal, which I think the story and script made it literal. Mm -hmm. But I think it, what it does is it puts the final stamp on the message of the film, which is uh, be, be true to who you know you are, and in the end, you'll be rewarded. Now, it may not be in the terms of a Lifetime Achievement Award, but that, that is representative of what it means. I think you would have still gotten that because he's still following what he wants to do. Yeah, I, by it's going true. Off into the distance with I have no problem even. with that. Yeah, of course. Uh, I would. I just, just that's my preferred types of endings. I like. I know how they buttoned it up in the beginning. You saw him with, at at the award show, and then they did the whole thing, and then they ended it with that. I'm like, I just, I didn't need it at all because uh, I would have gotten the same. I was like, I would have much preferred been like. I wonder if he made it. I, I, I wonder how he did. I wonder, like, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and they just, they don't leave it up to you. They're like, no, he made it. And I'm like, okay, whatever. That's fine. I guess he can be happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another thing I didn't, uh, like, I, I think sometimes this was incredibly overscored at times. Yeah, the, again, you that's funny. You didn't notice? Didn't bother me. Okay. Uh, not, not most of the, I, I'd say... 85% of the time, it was totally fine. And I, I really enjoyed it. Because it's actually, especially the song part, it reminded me of uh, Syrat because it's the same music composers that we've heard many, many times. And their music is incredible. But like sometimes the emotional moments, they would heighten up the music a little bit. Mm -hmm. It was a little much for me in those. But those are basically the only gripes I have at the end. And, and, and sometimes it was overscored. Other than that, I thought it was a really beautiful story. Yeah, the uh, subject matter, especially for 13 years ago, uh, Aside from obviously loving the, the the theater element of it being central, but the the, the personal subject matter of all of this and the homophobia and yeah. the way society makes people feel certain ways based on you living up to society's expectations, it, I, I thought was just really compelling. And it, it's not a surprise that this is a screenplay from a literary work. Mm -hmm. It feels like that because most screenplays from literary work are so substantive. You had to you had to cut out the substance because there's so much in the books. Yeah, uh, they they tend to lend really well towards screenplay adaptions as long as it's done well. And for those who know the book, I would imagine I read that it was it was well received critically. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like I said, this one has been on uh, a lot of people. Are like, why haven't you watched Not to Run yet? The only reason I had waited this long because I was really hoping we could get subtitles for the songs because i heard they were important to the story yeah like they they carried the story along which i'm sure they did because they were beautiful uh but like i said we didn't have subtitles unfortunately um i want the, I, I just my last final thought is i really do the more i watch marazzi films both current and older ones the more my heart resonates with what we heard who was it do you remember who it was in that round table from the marazzi industry uh talking about how much he loves the focus of the industry but wishes it got more attention like Damal and Telugu that that I don't remember who it was that said that in that round table of artists yeah I'm trying to remember but my I feel very much the same way we we talk a lot about and it's well deserved for example Malayalam being so consistently artistically unique and different I feel like Marathi is the real quiet dark horse waiting in the wings for and this stay true to what you're doing because I think it's just a matter of time. The smaller the world gets, and the more the, uh, you know, streaming services and things of that nature make films available to people, I think it's just a matter of time for Marathi to have a, a breakthrough thing internationally that causes people to recognize more and more not just them but the totality of Indian cinema being beyond Hindi. And I just I'm rooting for Marathi cinema because yeah. it's just consistently so good. I don't good. know how many if we watched two or three this year. Um, but that one earlier, you remember the one earlier this year that we watched the, um, basically about the God. The, the, um, yes. Then it ends with the boat. The boat. In the river. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's his, it's his, it's his, he's the main guy who has the vi the visitation when he, yeah. at the tree. Yeah. Yeah. That you said was one of your favorite. Indian I have films. great, great, great film. Um, ever. But, uh, yeah, this was fantastic. Uh, please let us know what the next Marathi film should be, uh, which would be the next Atul Kankarni Ugh. film. Because uh, we've seen him in Rang Basanti, we've seen him in... Um, hey Ram. Hey Ram, which is one of the first things we, I think, really took note of of him. Yeah, it was in Hey Ram. Uh, hey Ram. Um, and obviously we've seen the one with Taboo. And one heck of a screenplay writer, if I may say so. Yeah. <laughs> 
Exactly. Um, so uh, let us know what his next film should be, which should be the next Marathi film that we should watch. Please let us know down below.